Hey, welcome to another episode of Codersaurus. Today we're going to actually look at, uh, we're going to revisit the a, a posting I had made regarding uh, integrating Apex together with Bootstrap and AngularJS. And it's a series that I kind of want to get started. The first step being getting a basically a Bootstrap themed application installed into Apex so that we can kind of go from there. It's real simple and I've actually already got a posting about it. So getting started with Apex, Bootstrap, and AngularJS. And you can actually run through that, but the reason I'm revisiting it today and starting from scratch is basically if there's another um, Bootstrap themed application that is available and I think it makes it a little bit a little bit easier, a little bit better. Um, there's a few extras that are included in this. Now, what you'll need to do is you'll need to download the application. So if you go to dev.smartforapex.nl, give them your contact information, they'll give you a, a download link, basically. And um, and you can download the, the Apex theme. Now, an Apex theme is actually a set of um, it's a SQL script that you actually end up running and it creates all of the Apex components for you. And uh, basically it's, an ex it's a full export of an application, including all of the templates for the different pages and things like that. And this one in particular is based off of Twitter's Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and I've actually already gone through the process of signing up. So what we'll need to do is we'll actually do an import once we're in Application Builder, click on Import, and we'll choose a file. And in this case, um, I've downloaded these. We're, we're going to need to, once you unzip, um, you get you actually get two files. You get a S4ATB zip and a F131.sql. Now, the S4ATB zip actually contains a lot of the uh, Bootstrap and Font Awesome, some bootstrap extras and so um, we'll do that in a bit the first thing we need to do is actually create our basically our skeleton application um, and so that's this SQL file so we'll leave that the file type as a database application and leave the character set alone we'll click next and we'll choose our schema and we'll leave everything else as is. Run and build is an option and auto assigning the new application ID. Just let it come up with a, a unique ID for our, our application. Um, we will try and in install the supporting objects. They, that may fail um, depending on whether I've already got them installed or not. Well, let's click install and just see. Well, that didn't fail, so that's that's good. Now. The first thing we notice is there is no styling uh, or the styling is off. And so what we need to do is we actually need to go into our application and do the second piece of this, which is uh, adding some static application files. And uh, we'll do an upload again, let it install into root and click upload. Okay, and we're back. Um, you can see that this files are look looking correct. S four ATB. We've got Bootstrap Date Picker, so all of the files look to be in the right place. Oh, I know what I need to do. This is what I need to reference instead of the just the S four ATB by itself. So we go back to our application definition. We go to our application properties, and here, instead of just S4ATB, we need to reference these as being in the app images. And the reason being is that you can actually store files on the Apex server, or you can store them within Apex, and now we're good. Next time, we will cover actually um, pulling in the AngularJS library and getting started with AngularJS. Thanks.